Welcome back into Wake Up America. President Joe Biden introducing another round of sanctions on Russia yesterday. But did the administration go far enough? And what's the next step for Vladimir Putin? For more, let's head to Newsmax congressional correspondent Kilmeny Dukart joining us live at the White House this morning. Kilmeny, good morning. Good morning, Rob. Good to be with you. President Biden appeared to be in lockstep with NATO allies and European leaders on the sanctions he chose to implement. He's had the advantage of Congress being out of session to impose the measures he wants, but it prompted questions from reporters in that press conference why all options weren't on the table. Given the full-scale invasion, given that you're not pursuing uh, disconnecting Russia from what's called SWIFT, the international banking system, or other sanctions at your disposal. Respectfully, sir, what more are you waiting for? Specifically, with the sanctions we've imposed exceed SWIFT. The sanctions we imposed exceed anything that's ever been done. The sanctions we imposed have generated two-thirds of the world joining us. They are profound sanctions. Let's have a conversation in another month or so to see if they're working. Of course, is the Belgium-based cooperative of financial institutions that facilitates money transfers around the world. European leaders have been reluctant to do this because uh, Russia is a key energy supplier, and that would, of course, disrupt the flow to other major sectors, which Russia is a major manufacturer of, including jet engines and semiconductors. Uh, but Biden even admitted in that press conference that European leaders did not want that, Rob. But there were also questions as to why the president didn't sanction Putin himself. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham tweeting, Putin and his inner circle live large all over the world. It is past time for democracies to bring him to account. Not giving clarity to Putin about what would happen if he invaded Ukraine was a mistake. Not going after him personally is an even bigger mistake. Well, even Democratic Senator Bob Menendez indicated that he didn't think that sanctions package was enough. He believes Russia should be cut off from SWIFT and Putin should be sanctioned as well. He and Senator Jim Risch have been working on bipartisan legislation for weeks. We'll have to see how that develops when Congress is back in session next week. All right, Kilmeny Dukhart, appreciate the update. Thank you. Uh, we are continuing to follow the crisis in Ukraine as the world wakes up. This is a look at how much of Ukraine is now under Russian control. Don't forget this invasion began in earnest on Monday in the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine. If you take a look at the map, everything shaded in red, including Crimea, which was annexed in 2014 to the south, is now under Russian control. But I want to focus your attention to the center part of your screen. Kyiv is the Ukrainian capital, the seat of democracy in this country, which is approximately the size of the state of Texas. If you look to the north, that red is getting closer and closer to the capital. We're getting reports that the Russian army has taken over a major airport near Kyiv, and they are about six miles from the city center, uh, not far from the presidential compound, where we are also hearing President Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, 44-year-old father of two, is still uh, in his bunker right now. He has not left, uh, according to our latest reporting, the city of Kyiv. For more, let's welcome in Texas congressman and a member of the House Armed Services Committee and a U.S. Air Force veteran, Pat Fallon. Congressman, good morning. Great to have you back on the show. Good morning, Rob. Thank you. Um, Congressman, I, I, I just want to get your take on what Vladimir Putin is doing here. It's a Friday. Uh, a lot of people step away from the news, typically over the weekend. Um, do you think his goal is to take Kyiv or to take the entirety of Ukraine? And I also want to add to that, has Putin permanently, he's almost 70 years old, okay? So this is a legacy play, we know that. But has he permanently, for the rest of his life, isolated himself from the international community? Well, Rob, I, it, in, in part, uh, to answer your uh, this last part first, I hope so, because the last person to invade the Ukraine, Rob, was named Adolf. Right. And this is, it's a, this is the biggest land invasion we've seen in Europe since World War II. And Putin, you know, he was asked once uh, if the Ukrainians and Russians were brothers, and he said, no, we share the same soul. So he's never really looked upon the Ukraine as a sovereign nation. And it's clear, I mean, Putin also said, that the demise of the Soviet Union in the 20th century was the greatest geopolitical disaster uh, in the last 100 years. He resents the verdict of the Cold War. Wow. He's obviously a, a megalomaniac, and thousands of people, if not tens of thousands of people, may die, and the world economic situation is going to suffer to satisfy the goals of this one despot. 
yet as all this happens, Russia remains the third biggest oil supplier ahead of Saudi Arabia to the United States. Um, you're an Air Force veteran. I I'm wondering what kind of resistance you think the Ukrainian people will be able to mount here? Do they have a chance or could they be, you know, like the Af Afghanis were during the 1980s with Russia, could they be the X factor? They, they, I think they are the X factor. And, you know, there's such thing as a Pyrrhic victory, a very costly one. And we, we've seen some protests, not many, but some protests in Russia. And I'm almost saying, I'm almost saying again, Rob, the Soviet Union, because this evokes that, like the evil empire type of thing. But if the Ukrainians stand up, there's 44 million people in that country. Right. And they fight and they inspire the world. And world opinion gets, I mean, it's, it's hot right now, but I want it white hot. I want people to be furious across the globe because this is essentially an economic siege. And it's who's going to blink first. Putin's betting on the fact that the West will blink before he has to. That's a great point. We saw a, uh, an image um, of Dallas, Texas, uh, not far from you, uh, where they had a massive, a building, massive building lit up with the Ukrainian flag. We've seen a lot of solidarity with the Ukrainian people on social media as well. Um, what would this resistance look like? Are we talking, you know, harken back to the Second World War, hand-to-hand -hand combat in the street, uh, resistance networks, underground resistance networks. I think of maybe the French resistance in occupied France during the Second World War. Is that what we could be facing? <clears throat> Rob, the Ukrainians are tough people. They took on the Nazis. They had to eat four years of the greatest military machine history had ever seen and ran them over. And, you know, they were, you know, we got to remember what happened there with, during occupation. If a, if a German soldier was killed, they oftentimes just hung 100 civilians randomly. Uh, and these people wow. endured that, and they fought. And Stalingrad's not all that far away. We know what happened there. If it gets to be hand-to-hand -hand combat in the streets, and the world is a very small place now, and the world's going to watch this, and we're going to see it with all the technology we have now. And, you know, the, the images of, let's say, God forbid, a 17-year-old girl, you know, lying dead in the street, killed mm. by a, a Russian soldier, those images are going to be burned and seared into the memories and, and to the hearts of people worldwide. And Russia will be, you know, if you're a pariah and you act like one, you got to be treated like one. Yeah, that's a great point. If you break it, you own it. Uh, Putin's broken it. Uh, I don't think the Ukrainian people are going to let him own it. Uh, Congressman, great to have you on. Um, hope to have you on back next week. I know the Texas primary is coming up uh, early next week, a uh, big important day in the Lone Star State. That's Texas Congressman Pat Fallon. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.